what about CRISPR? And what do you think uh, is going to come out of that in terms of like real world application for an adult? I mean, what if people don't know what CRISPR is? Please explain it in, in, in the layman's terms. Uh, yeah, so CRISPR is a, a term um, actually was invented in, in my department partly, so I know it pretty well. It's uh, ba- bacteria have an immune system that cuts invaders, that cuts their DNA. Uh, and what we've done now as scientists, we've now utilized that uh, system, we take it out of the bacteria, and we use it to create designer mutations, designer gene changes in animals and also in humans. So it's a bacterial immune system that corrects genes. And we use it all the time now. It's um, it's it's actually what's interesting about it is we've been able to mutate genes for many years, but this is dial up a gene mutation. You can choose exactly where you want to make it, and uh, so I think many of your listeners will know that recently, uh, late last year, a Chinese researcher in our field came out and said he's engineered a couple of twin girls with CRISPR to be resistant to HIV, the AIDS virus. Wow! Um, if they're telling you that. You got to think they're doing some stuff they're not telling you about, right? Well, yeah. Have some kids with giant heads and well, it's coming see through walls, read yeah. minds. Well, yeah. If you start to see people uh, that are ninety and uh, and they're still as young as twenty, you know something's going on. Yeah, that's the weird one, right? If you can, you'd go, "Hey, what are you doing? Nothing. Just eating healthy, looking good. Take that, care. Bye." That's right. <laughs> they're not going to tell you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, so consider this. that, that So the chance of getting HIV in China is one in a thousand. So that doctor was seemingly, he thought he was ethical, protecting the babies from something that's, mm. I would say, really rare. Right. Whereas if he really wanted to do something helpful to those kids, and we agreed it was it was something you should do, why not make them resistant to heart disease or to cancer? Right. We can do that. It was weird that he chose HIV as the first test. Why do you think they did that? Um, I think because the, it was a very um, well-understood mutation that would, if you just destroyed the gene, it would work, whereas with these other diseases, you have to be much more precise. But the reason that we scientists got really upset was that he did it in secrecy and then just lo- launched it on the world. Mm. And, and that kind of thing, because the, it's a fine line in ethics, you want to be doing that with total transparency. Right. And in, I think he was hoping to become... Um, win a Nobel Prize or be uh, a star, and it, it backfired on him because he, he just did it in secrecy. It backfired in the scientific communities? Absolutely. In the, in the real world, in the media, I was shocked how little discussion there was. If this news came out in the 2000s during the Bush era, it w- there would have been panels, investigations. It would have been in the news for months, but it wasn't. People went, uh, what's next on Twitter? Do you think it's just because the news cycle is so insane? I do. Yeah. Um, when you have a, a scientific experiment of that nature, what's the standard protocol for a scientist? Whether it is, are, is it the same in China and in Russia and in the United States? Does the scientific community almost uh, operate under different, like a, a different set of rules than anything else? You mean between countries? Or? Yes, I mean. You know, like obviously technology is not shared. Like China is doing something technologically. The United States is they, – we have to speculate. We have to figure it out. But when it comes to medical science, right. is it sort of an open book? Is everybody sharing information? Uh, no. Or at least uh, alerting everyone to what they're working on? Or? Well, I know where you're going with this. Um, at least I think I do. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I, I advise governments um, around the world about what's going on. Um, under the radar, as my best I know. And there are countries, I'm not going to name them, um, that are doing research under the radar and are preventing people like myself from entering those buildings to have a look at what's going on. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm sure that um, what's going on in there is actually uh, a little bit broader than yeah. what we hear about. But I don't know, how, how long is it before a Did mother? you just say Russia? No, I didn't say Russia. Okay. I didn't say anything. Uh, no country. I, I want to be able to travel freely. I thought freely. I heard you say Russia. <laughs> uh, but, oh, I said it. But in, in, in countries where there are uh, st- different standards, what's stopping a mother who wants to prevent their child from having heart disease, which could k- kill their child, you know, 40% chance versus one in a thousand. And eventually, you could make a child that could live 200 years. Um, once we know how to do it, that could be the future. Um, there's always a concern that 
someone is doing something that is beneficial in one way but negative in another way and if everyone doesn't get to examine the research um it's very difficult like if we wanted to, in the united states wanted to do something similar to what they're doing over there we would want to have access to what they've learned right uh we would and so generally scientists share information right but there are companies that are government owned that are very secret right um uh, or even private organizations, and that's where it, it's a little tricky. And that's why we we scientists get really upset when companies or organizations don't share information. Uh, Especially in something this critical. Right? right. And what's not really stated, but it's my belief, is that one of the reasons there was such a backlash against this CRISPR design a baby experiment, and it really was an experiment, um, it's not just that it was potentially dangerous and you could end up with kids that have deformities, but also that unless we do this in a in a measured manner under supervision there's there could be a backlash like there was against stem cell research you know in the 2000s mm. we don't want that again we want to be able to do this the right way this time right is it particularly if something goes wrong with those children right one person could ruin it for millions of people right the if they jump the gun and yeah so this we're we're on the second generation of crispr is that correct uh, in terms of uh, the editing tools, they've yeah. become more. They have. There's, there's surprisingly that there's a lot of different bacteria that have the these systems. So we're we're getting new ones all the time. Some that are more accurate because um, you don't want what we call off-target effects. You don't want to accidentally mutate some gene that's required for head development. Um, and so yeah, we're. I think. In my department, we're on fourth generation. Fourth now. generation. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. See, I'm just going by uh, Radio Lab podcasts. <laughs> yeah. So my, my department's a fun, fun department to be. I would in. imagine they are inventing amazing. all sorts of stuff. What did you ever see the documentary Icarus? Oh, yeah. It rings a bell. It's uh, Brian Fogel's documentary on uh, the Russian doping program, state-sponsored doping program in uh, Sochi, the Sochi Olympics. And how they had this incredibly complicated system of stealing the urine and putting it through a hole in the wall and putting fake urine back through. It was really, really amazing, amazing, amazing documentary. But uh, details this incredibly complicated state-sponsored doping system. I would imagine that with something like CRISPR or some various new forms of genetic editing – that that's one of the things that they're going to be looking into, that they're going to be looking into things that are going to enhance athletic performance. Yeah. I mean, you might need to have a, a DNA test to see if you've put one of these viruses in your right. body. And, why are you 50 and now you're running like a 20-year-old? Right. So that, that's all possible. You know, the, the, I, I also write reports for, for governments, and one of the things that I predicted 50, in, within the next 15 years was CRISPR being used to engineer the human genome and make a baby. I didn't realize it was going to happen within one year. Wow. A lot of these technologies that I'm trying to predict happen way faster than even I think are going to happen. Do you think it's possibly happened in other circumstances that they're not going public with? Um, it's, it's always possible. Um, there may be some human clones running around right now that we don't know about. Do you think so? It's certainly doable scientifically. There might be some rogue nation who's doing it. Barbara Streisand's dogs were, uh, were pretty easy uh, to clone. Yeah, the, she had her dogs cloned, right? Yeah. Yeah, Sammy, the 14-year-old dog, is now uh, – there's two of them. Um, Jesus Christ. It, That's it, so weird. That'd be like – I'd be so scared. I'd go to sleep and wake up, and that thing would be hovering over my face with red glowing eyes. Uh, yeah, wait till you have designer dogs. Cemetery. What, 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 a friend of mine, Carlos Bustamante at Stanford, we, we're entertaining the idea of making dogs live longer – uh, genetically, so why would you want your family member to only live yeah. twelve years? I think about that, man. My dog's only two, and he's such a sweetie. You know, I'm sad that one day. I mean, I had to put my other dog down recently, and uh, who's thirteen, and mm. he's just really he was a, a mastiff too, and he was struggling. And I just think, man, this two year old one day he's going to be in that same sort of situation. Well, it is, and, and so we have three dogs. My wife runs a therapy dog organization. Barbara Streisand had her beloved dog Samantha cloned. That crazy bitch. Look at her. Two copies of one dog. Jesus Christ, that's so strange. How about just get a new dog, you fucking nut? Uh, well, so, <laughs> so we might be nuts in my household because we're, we're giving our dogs NMN. 
Oh, and how's it doing? How old's the dog so now? So good. What well, the oldest dog is nine, and he's still doing fine. Uh, does, he, does he look different? Uh, my wife says so. These are anecdotes. So I'm not going to publish them, but uh, so ours is a therapy dog, and he has to go to hospitals and nursing homes. And if he has NMN, according to my wife, uh, he can't be a therapy dog because he's too excited. He's running around, jumping around. Really? So that that's anecdotal, but that seems to fit with what uh, others have experienced too. Wow. Um, yeah, so we, we're, we're hoping to have uh, some treatments for some pets uh, shortly, one of the companies that I'm working with. Treatments for pets. Yeah. Well, you got to think, hey, man, dogs only going to live 13 years anyway, you know? Well, yeah, and also we have a dog that has a, a kidney defect and the vet says it's only going to live five years so it, she's three now so, so that's the one you're experimenting on well we experiment on on it on all of them but um <laughs> but what's the downside that's got to be so uncomfortable for some people listening to this right now like oh i don't know how to feel about that all right what is the downside if your dog has got a kidney defect and it's only going to probably live to be nine meanwhile that dog's going to live to be a thousand years old well we'll see i'll, I'll Come back and I'll let you know. Be in the lotus position, meditating a hundred years from now. What do you do if it starts talking to you? <laughs> That'd be great. Um, yeah. What What do you do if you uh, turn a dog into some new kind of thing that lives thirty or forty years? What do you do? You tell people like if your dog, like right now, you're talking about it on the podcast, and pr- a bunch of people are probably going to remember, it, but a lot of people forget. But if like fifteen, twenty years from now, your dog's still chasing balls and People are going to come over your house. Hey, Dave, what the fuck's going on with your dog, man? Right. Char- <laughs> Is that the same dog? That's Charlie, yeah. How come Charlie doesn't have gray hair anymore, man? 